I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. Here it is, Monday. Strange to do a netcast on a Monday, but it's Labor Day, and I'm off, so I get to do a netcast. I also get to show you my new <laughs> tablet computer, the G tablet from ViewSonic. I'm going to turn it around here. I don't know if you'll be able to see the screen because all the shiny, lots of shiny there. But anyway, that is actually the Dr. Bill website. So let me go back to where I was. Yes, there. That's not where I was. Well, I'll get there eventually. Anyway, the point is that uh, I'm going to do the netcast based on the blog. Of course, the blog being Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C, as it says right there. There's where I was. I can punch that and it'll come right up. Um, so, it's like this. I'm going to read off the blog, but instead of turning and looking at the screen over there, I'm going to be able to actually hold the tablet up and, and look at it close. Yes. So, um, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. Techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. And oh, by the way, uh, we are only doing one sponsor this week, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and that is, of course, Citrix Systems and their excellent product, uh, Go to PC Express. Yes. And as you can see right there, the little banner thingy reminds you about Go to PC Express. And I encourage you, strongly encourage you, to log into this bit.ly URL, right here, special URL, and take advantage of the amazingly cool offer because it's awesome. And if you go ahead and take advantage of it, you'll not only help yourself because you'll be getting the trial, 30-day free trial, but you'll also be helping Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon, the netcast, to stay on the air, so to speak. I know you're saying there's no air, you're just netcasting. I know, but this is the way we refer to things. You know what I'm saying? Like Todd Cochran says on his Geek News Central, it's as live as it can be. <laughs> there you go. All right, let's look at our items here on the old tablet. Isn't that so cool? Earth scientists say that aliens may destroy the Earth if we don't stop global warming. No, I didn't believe it either. I thought it was a hoax, but it's really a serious, serious, right, um, scientific thing. <laughs> I mean, this is this is the way I said it here. No, really, that's what they're doing at NASA these days. They pulled the plug on manned space exploration, <laughs> but they're warning about global warming, alien destruction. Sigh. Gort Klatu Barada Nikto. That's of course a reference to the day the Earth stood still. The original day the Earth stood still. Uh, humanity was, was being considered for destruction because of nuclear war. Then they remade it with Keanu Reeves, who as we know is an alien, and they said it was because we're destroying the Earth through global warming. So that's why I threw that in there. Anyway, their article here says it may not rank as the most compelling reason to curb greenhouse gases, but reducing our emissions might just save humanity from a preemptive alien attack, scientists claim. This is a real news item. <clears throat> I'm not making this up. I know. It sounds like something I would make up, <laughs> but it's not. Watching from afar, extraterrestrial beings might view changes in Earth's atmosphere as symptomatic of a civilization growing out of control and may take drastic action to keep us from becoming a more serious threat, the researchers explain. So, of course, they would send UFOs to bomb us into Bolivian. Oblivion. That's next to Weehawken, New Jersey. No, I just made that up. Okay. 
Next item. Google may yet release the G Drive. Now back in the days of yore, back when, when men were men and computers were computers in 2006, <laughs> Google was internally testing a project code named Platypus. They apparently have weird code names. An online storage service. Now see, they would have been way ahead of their time. But when it was accidentally disclosed during an analyst meeting as G Drive, it quickly captured the web's imagination. Uh, Google seemed to be on the verge of transforming their servers into our own personal hard drives in the cloud. Plenty of startups were working on this, and still are, but the presumption was that Google would be able to scale this far beyond anyone else's ability to do it, and do it for free, or very cheap. Google, da da, Google refused to talk about it, but story after story kept coming, then something weird happened. G Drive never launched. Why? Well, because some dude at Google decided that putting your data in the cloud, which back then they didn't call it the cloud, but putting your data in the cloud, that was a silly idea. The whole idea of files is old and redundant anyway. It's going to go away. So why even bother? <laughs> yeah, right. So, fail. So they had an epic fail and they didn't do it. But it may be coming out again anyway. They found some code hidden in, in some of their other code that talked about drive.google.com, which doesn't actually exist yet. But it, once it does, I suspect there will be a G drive in the cloud. Why not? Amazon's doing it. You know, everybody else is doing it. Why not get on the bandwagon late, given that you could have been first? Yeesh. Oh, by the way, completely forgot to mention that you probably have noticed that I finally got a haircut. Yes, and they went nutty. They just cut it all off, including my beard. They trimmed it down to nothing. But, you know, it's like I told my wife, it'll grow back. Yes. All right, just threw that in there. Firefox 8, another item here. Firefox 8 may catch up to Chrome for speed. Firefox 8 is 20% faster than Firefox 5 and matches Chrome 14. Now, here's the thing. Basically, what they're saying is, is that when they finally get around to releasing Firefox 8, it will finally match the current version of Chrome. Yeah, well, I guess that's better than being sluggish and slow like it is right now. But, uh, you know, they could have just made it, kept it fast and lean like it used to be back in the day when I used it. Now I use Chrome entirely. Next item, Apple admits that Final Cut Pro X, 10X, I don't know, is a disaster. And they put Final Cut Pro 3 back on sale. Now think about that. They come out with a new version of their product and it's so bad. And people complained so hard that they took it off the shelves and they're putting the old version back. Dude, talk about an epic fail. My goodness. Anyway, Apple quietly, quietly, puts Final Cut Pro, Final Cut Studio 3 back on sale. In a move to sell off existing stock, Apple is once again selling Final Cut Pro Studio Studio 3, the professional video editing software, it discontinued earlier this year. Mac rumors noted today that Apple put the software bundle on sale despite having discontinued it months earlier with the release of Final Cut Pro X. The software is only being made available through Apple's phone sales and not its online or retail stores, the blog notes. The price is $9.99, which is what the bundle cost before the release of Final Cut Pro X, which of course stinks. Everybody says so. I don't know, because I don't use it. It's too expensive. But, so they say, whoa! <laughs> uh, yes. It's time for the Geek Software of the Week, as the drum roll just reminded us. Geek Software of the Week this week is Wind Patrol. Wind Patrol. What is Wind Patrol? Well, I'll tell you. This week's Geek Software of the Week helps keep you safe as you surf. Safe surfing. That's hard to say. 
And these days, there are a bunch of hazards as we mosey around the net. Do -do 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 -do. You don't have to be surfing bad sites anymore because a lot of sites have been taken over. Some good sites are getting hijacked and turned into malware sites. Wind Patrol helps keep you safe online. Awesomeness. So, you should get Wind Patrol. It's at windpatrol.com. Had to click and check. It's so cool to be able to do that. I just love tablets. By the way, my tablet is running the hacked uh, version of Android Gingerbread. Put out by Vegan Tab. This guy, you know, he is just this guy, you know, who who <laughs> hacked the gingerbread code and converted it, converted it into the operating system that can run on a ViewSonic G-Tab because the ViewSonic G-Tab software that came with it stinks. Stinko. That's the official sign for Stinko. Um, so... Anyway, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I hit a button I didn't mean to hit. It took me somewhere else. So, um, but what was I saying? Do you remember what I was saying? Oh, yes, Wind Patrol. Uh, Wind Patrol's cool. So download it. It's windpatrol.com, and it's very cool. I was also talking about the G-Tab. The cool thing about the G-Tab is it's awesome hardware specs. Dual processor. Dual processor, Tegra processor. And 512 meg of memory for your RAM memoriness. And 16 gig of internal memory, kind of the hard drive part. And then I got another 16 gig SD, micro SD card, plugged it in. And, and check this out. This is so cool. Let me I'll show you. Take this little thingy. And you see that right there? That little drop-down thingy there that I did? That's a real USB port. Where you can plug in a real USB drive. And it'll see it and recognize it. There's the micro SD card right there. The same slot. And then you have a place for your plugging in of your USB thing and there is your speaker on this side and a speaker on this side for stereo yes headphone jack power thing power button and volume me button on top there and then you've got these special soft button controls on the side dude it's just so cool i just i love it Particularly once I hacked it and put the right operating system on it. It just got so much better. It didn't even have the Android uh, market. I mean, come on, guys. What's up with you and ViewSonic? <laughs> anyway, so I put the real hacked operating system on it, and I have the Android market, and I was able to download the Citrix receiver and download the VMware View client and all that. I still haven't got back to work because it's, you know, it's Labor Day. I'm not at work at this point, but I'm going to use all that when I get back to work. And, and Oh, and look at this. I got an official... It's hard to see. See if I can get it on camera. Eh, it's not really showing up very well. But anyway, that is an official Targus bag for a tablet. I even got that because I'm just so protective of my techie stuff. Anyway, next item. The Amazon Kindle tablet is real and is coming soon. A guy actually got to play with it, and he talks about it here. It has a 7-inch capacitive touchscreen. It runs Android. It runs Android. That's just so cool. Rumors of Amazon making a full-fledged tablet have persisted for a while. I believe we were the first to report it. This is TechCrunch guy talking here. And uh, he says uh, that they were the first to report it. And they are... <laughs> it will be called Amazon's Android App Store. We'll have a, an App Store. Uh, dude, all kinds of stuff. What else? Uh, it will be color. You know, I mentioned that because the Kindle, the regular Kindle, isn't color. So it's kind of cool that it's going to be color. It's just awesome. And they're going to release it cheap. Ish. So... Pretty good. All right, next item. I got a lot of items. There's a lot going on. And I've been blogging longer because of Labor Day and I'm doing the program late. And there's just all kinds of reasons that you don't care about. <clears throat> next item. First TV with BitTorrent built in. Aha! How cool is that? Well, except for the fact that most of the shows that are out there on BitTorrent 
really aren't there legally. They were uploaded illegally. And so if you had a television that automatically bit-torrented your program and you got to watch it, you'd be technically illegal using it. Just saying. But there you go. So world's first BitTorrent certified digital TV launches. The world's first digital TV with BitTorrent inside will be presented to the public tomorrow at the IFA trade show for consumer electronics in Berlin. That's in Germany. Yes. The TV is manufactured by Vestal and uses technology from BitTorrent Incorporated that allows consumers to find, download, and play their favorite digital media directly on their television, wherever it may have come from. <laughs> okay. So that's interesting. BitTorrent actually is a very cool technology. I mean, think about it. You've got all these people out there that are all sharing these files. And the more people that are in the cloud of folks, you know, that are out there sharing it, the faster your download is because the bits are just flying in from everywhere. Oh, it's just cool. Okay, here's a late breaking story. DNS hack derails some prop popular websites. Not popular. Popular. The sites themselves weren't hacked, but the DNS entries were misdirected on some popular websites such as the Register, the Daily Telegraph, and UPS. UPS? Popular websites including registered, I already said that, and others have fallen victim to a DNS hack that has resulted in visitors being redirected to third-party web pages. The third party webpage reads Torguvangigli Gelbarbana Hacked. Hacking is not a crime. Technically, that's wrong. It is a crime. So they're wrong. September 4th, we Torguvangigli declared this day as World Hack Day. Have fun. Hack you. They did hack them. So, they apparently can't spell either because it's all spelled weirdly. It's all spelled like in leet. I guess they're hackers, they speak leet. But anyway, basically when I say they didn't hack the actual sites, uh, it wasn't the sites that got hacked, it was that they hacked the DNS entries of the sites, meaning the DNS pointed to the wrong website, not the correct website for those particular sites. The common ground is that all these, uh, these sites were registered via a company called NetNames. Now, NetNames it does, has not had a comment on it, but apparently, if I had to hazard a guess, NetNames were the dudes that were hacked. And then the bad guys redirected the site's names to their own site that had all of this badly spelled garbage on it. And there you go. Huh. Anyway, so. Now, one last thing we have for this week is a Game Master segment. We're going to have the Game Master on. He's going to talk about stuff, as he does sometimes. And we wanted to have that. But it will be shorter. Last time it was like an hour and 15 minutes of talking about movies. We're going to try to keep it shorter this time. So let's go to that now. So here we are with the Game Master segment. Outdoors. Outdoors in the Whoa. greenery. And the isn't brightness. This, it's so bright. Isn't this like the anti-geek location? Well, I like green, even mm. though I'm a geek. I'm a green geek. By the way, no you're not. Well, not um, a green green. Like a greeny green. We have the Dr. Pepper again and Dr. Same, Dr. Exact yeah, same thing as last time. Thing. Yay. Yay. Well, we're boring when it comes to drinkage. You know, we we're just, boring. That's why we have people watching. Yeah, we have us. people watching us because we're boring. Anyway. Anyway. So. So you wanted to talk about something? Yes. Um. So some. Of, actually, they probably don't know. It's it was my birthday recently. Yes. Ish. Ish. And he turned nineteen. Yes. And for That's my birthday. Nod. Yes. I got a couple of games actually. But yes, you did. Yes. But the main one I want to talk about. Day right now is Infamous 2. I see. It's Infamous for being. Yeah. Apparently, it's not Infamous for being anything. Psych. 
Anyway, Infamous One was a game about a dude named Cole McGrath mm -hmm. who got superpowers. Cool. Pretty much. Um, I like superpowers. There's this whole convoluted time travel story involved. Yes. But I suppose I shouldn't spoil it for anyone who hasn't played that game. Like me. Long story. Yes. Well, long story short, Cole has to fight this creature called the Beast that's going to destroy the, the world. The Beast. Okay. Um, which would be bad. That would be bad. So crossing the streams is also bad. Yes. Unless you're finding Dozer. Yes. Uh, but yes, there was a whole time travel convoluted storyline where Cole traveled through time to make himself more powerful. Uh huh. I won't say anything more than that because it's very cool when you finally get the reveal. But okay. Anyway. Um. So, and he did it all to fight the beast. Yes. Because the beast is going to destroy the world. Fight the beast on your chest. This is a wolf. What's a beast? Well, this beast that we're fighting in the game is actually a, like, 30-story tall lava monster thing. And it didn't look like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. At all. Okay. Anyway. Just goes are reminded me. So. Um, so that's kind of the setup for the second game, is you're supposed to fight this all-powerful being. Yeah. And here you are... Cole McGrath, and you kind of fail at the start of the game. Okay. You fight the beast and you fail. Okay. So you're left with less power than you had before, in fact, and the beast is still carving its path of destruction through the world, and you have to find some way to make yourself powerful enough to stop it. Ah. Does it involve any radioactive spiders? Not spiders, but pieces of the ground. That got They're irradiated. Pretty, oh, hmm. Yep. Do um, so you wear it like a ring? No, no. It, basically, he absorbs the radiation into himself, and then the ground part just kind of crumbles. Okay. Which is actually a pretty cool effect when they do it in the, the game. It's pretty cool. All right. Anyway. But yeah, um, so you have to go around collecting those and getting new powers, and there's a point in the game where you can also trade powers with another superhero type character mm. person thing. Mega Man. No. So there's plenty of you know ways you can get powers, but meanwhile you're having to deal with the troubles of a whole new city because the first game you took care of Empire City, which had its fair share of troubles. Yes. And they weren't troubles or troubles, were you asked? Yeah. Um, Pretty good. Yes, but New Marais, which is the new city, has well, to put it bluntly, it has swamp monsters. Okay. Yeah. DC Comics. Pretty much. And fighting the swamp monsters is a group, 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 group. Okay. <laughs> that was a character on the uh, cartoon show. That with... would be Gleep, and that would be Super Friends. No, Gleep was the monkey on Super Friends. Gleep was the weird shaped globby thing on the long time ago way show with uh, these caveman type people who were also super powered. Oh, um, Captain Caveman. No, 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 no. Even further back than that. This was in the 60s. Uh, oh. 60s and what? 70s. Um, Inhumans? No, what Inhumans? I might anyway, actually know what you're talking about, but I can't place it. Anyway. Yes. Bloop. Strange. Anyway, oh, well. but no, a group of militia people yes, dudes. that are very anti-mutants, basically. Ah. Um, led. Sentinels. Yeah, basically. Led by a guy named Bertrand. And okay. he's, other than the Beast, he's sort of the main villain of the game. But, um, because, you know, Cole is technically mute. Yeah, but not born that way. Exactly. Yeah, well, in Unless this... he was born with the ability to absorb radiation as a power. You could technically yeah. argue that. Technically, yeah, there's a gene that lets people do that. Oh, okay. Called the well. conduit gene, so, anyway. Okay. So, not knowing anything about this, I'm already up to speed. Well, I mean, it's a superhero story, so yeah, it's, well, it's going to have certain threads in it, yes. the elements. Uh, but, yeah, that's kind of the story. You're after defeating the beast. I really want to spoil the ending because it's such an amazing ending. Yeah, well, but you shouldn't. Know. I shouldn't do that. Now, so this is one or two you're talking about at this point. The second one now. Okay, so you're, you're on the second one talking about yeah. that. The first one ended with the whole time travel story. Ah, and the second one picks up where you just have to fight the beast. somehow. Yeah. So, um, cool. gameplay-wise, 
For those of you that have played Infamous 1, it'll be pretty much the same, if okay. I'm honest. It's not really different at all. Yeah, they promised certain things that they were going to fix that they just totally didn't. Like, um, there's this thing, you know, Cole has, he, like, parkours all around the place. You know, that Whatever is. that means. No? Uh, free running? You know what that no. is? Basically, you, it's like where you climb buildings and stuff by doing all kinds of crazy flips and jumps. Oh, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that on Yes. Yes. I don't uh, remember where I saw it, but somewhere. Yes. Well, Cole does that. Ah. And the gameplay mechanics for it are a bit sticky. Okay. So if you go, if you're jumping and you get too close to something you can grab onto, he's going to grab onto it, whether you want him to or not. Sort well, of thing. that's tacky. Yeah. They <laughs> said they were... Uh -huh. No pun intended, uh -huh. yeah. They said mm -hmm. they were going to fix that. Totally didn't, but... I mean, it doesn't bring the game down too much, except that, you know, I had heard they were going to fix it, and then they didn't. They didn't. So, it was disappointing in that sense, but, you know, other than that, I, it, do, it doesn't affect gameplay that much. Ah. Usually. Okay. Usually. But anyway, um, it's a third-person shooter. Mm -hmm. So, you, the camera is over Cole's shoulder, which is actually a very awkward camera angle when you're first getting used to it, but mm -hmm. eventually you do get used to it. Um, but it has like a aiming reticle that you aim with. Mm hmm. Reticle. Yeah. No if I pronounce that right. Don't even know what that is, so I'll go with it. <laughs> I would have said sight. Yeah, well, what fun is that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, and then you zap things with lightning, and then later on you can also get ice or fire powers, which are pretty cool. So he's a weird mutant. Kind of, yeah. He can do um, all these various things. Well, the ice and fire powers, like I said, came from trading powers with other people. Ah. So there's a whole storyline in the game about that. Um, let's see. I, it's been so long since I've actually reviewed a game. I don't remember all my categories. Well, you don't have to be a, have official categories or anything. You could just say good, bad, and different. I guess. Um, the game overall was definitely good. That's good. It was pretty much exactly the right length, especially since you'll want to play it through once as the good coal and once as the evil coal. <laughs> okay. Well, the, the story is mostly the same, depending on which side you choose, but mm -hmm. there are key points where it splits off, and the ending will definitely be a major difference. I haven't actually beaten the game evil yet. I've only done it as the good cold so far. I see. But it I know from what I saw of the ending as the good cold that the evil cold's ending will be very interesting. Hmm. So... If you're evil, I'm not sure you'd want to save the Earth. Well... Or world. I... Or whatever it is. I am not going to comment. I'm sure, because it would give something away. Yes. But yeah, there's also, um... I mean, this is obviously not that big of a deal. Uh, but whether you're good or evil, there's, like, different graphical changes. Like, your lightning changes color. Yeah. Your clothes change color. I think if you're evil, you also get, like, some extra scars and stuff. Oh, of course. And different tattoos. Um, stuff like that. Also, random annoying thing that a lot of fans are annoyed at, they changed Cole's voice actor for this game from the last one. Oh, okay. I thought you meant whether he was good or evil. They changed no, it. no. But from, from the last game, they changed it. And I actually like his new one better. Ah. He has a, a wider range of emotions, it seems like. Hmm. But it is kind of jarring, you know, booting the game up for the first time. That's not cool, you know? Interesting. Everyone else's voices are the same, too, that carries over, so... Hmm. There Just you couldn't go. get the guy back. I guess. Probably. Or he didn't want to do it. Or something. Or something. Or they decided he didn't have a wide enough range of emotions for the character well, they that, to portray. Could be, too. But, yeah. Because the original Cole's voice was very gravelly and sort of like... <laughs> sort yes. of thing. Except not that bad. Yeah, well, that was pretty bad. You couldn't yeah. understand him after a while. Yes, well... Are you talking to me? Anyway. Uh, so all in all, pretty good. Yes, if I was going to give it a number, um, I would say 8.5 out of 10. Out of 10. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Yep. Cool. The first game would have been probably an 8, by the way. So it is ah, so it is slightly better. Oh, oh yeah. And um, one thing I forgot to mention, it has user-generated content. You can make your own missions. Is that different from the first one? Yeah, the first one... You couldn't didn't do have anything like that at all. So that's cool. So it's An improvement. Neat. I haven't tried it yet, but it, it should be interesting. Cool. Well, this has uh, been our first Game Master segment in the outdoors. And, you know, it's bright and shiny. 
And that's why we've been squinting this whole time. We're squinting the whole time because it's so bright and shiny. Although it's cloudy, technically. I mean, I thought the lighting and so forth wouldn't be so harsh because it would be even. And the fact that we're out on our deck, which just got rebuilt significantly. Well, re... Well, rebuilt. We added some boards where they needed new boards and got yeah, stained. Yeah, it got stained is the main thing. That Mainly, the yes. Part. So, guy did a pretty cool job. Oh, and we got a ramp built. Which and I a ramp, is a, is a, which you can't see, obviously, but it's around the corner. Clearly, you can see the ramp in the shot. And yes, yeah. it's way around the corner. Anyway, um, so this is cool, though, sitting out here doing a net cast. That's kind of odd. I'm actually seeing more of the back of the house than I normally do because I normally don't come out here. I'm inside most of the time. Yes. Yeah. How cool was that to have the Game Master share with us some good information about gameage? Yes, gameage. I make these things up. Anyway, that should do it for now. But remember, until next time, the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.